Hey guys, Rob Baynard, producer at LiveX here, and today I've got the HyperDeck Studio Mini from Blackmagic Design. Now, we saw this come out in a web presentation by Blackmagic a couple of weeks ago, and we knew we had to get our hands on it, as well as some of the other things they released in that uh, live stream. Uh, we'll get to those a little bit later in some future unboxings, but right now I just want to dive into the HyperDeck Studio Mini and tell you what differentiates it from its bigger brother, the full HyperDeck Pro, Studio Pro, and the new features are in this compact little recorder. So let me dive right into it. As you can see on the front here, it looks very similar to some of the Terranex Mini converters. Let's open this up and see what what it looks like when we uh, get it out of the box. Some things to note about the HyperDeck Studio Mini are that it can support 6G SDI input, which gives you an Ultra HD 2160p 30 frames per second recording capability. Uh, of course, it also does HD and SD formats as well. You can see the little layout of the diagram on the back here where it has Ethernet, uh, it says PoE+, Plus. I'm not sure if this can actually be powered by an ethernet switch so that'd be something i need to look more into but power over ethernet's really popular especially if any of you use ptz cameras robotic cameras that are powered via poe plus switch it looks like you could plug this directly into it as well and it can power it otherwise some of their other devices have just said ethernet on the back but this one specifically says ethernet poe plus which makes me think that i could power it over ethernet uh, which would be really really cool it also has the new USB-C converter for those of you who have the new MacBook. And most of the devices are trending towards using USB-C instead of Thunderbolt or the traditional USB 3.0. So that's really cool in and of itself. Um, ref in, ref out, and the remote as well as the I.O., which we'll get into. This is the welcome document that you get with all Blackmagic products. And they put the software and manual in the SD card. Literally everything you buy from Blackmagic has one of these. Don't worry about it, you can throw it out. So, this is the unit. As you can see, it looks quite different from some of the, uh, its larger brother, the HyperDeck. Most notably, that it records to SD cards. It has two SD card slots that do have a continuous record feature, so it has failover recording. When one card fills up, the other card uh, begins its recording without dropping frames. That's really important, especially um, on longer shows and live environments where you need to continually swap cards to keep your recording going, especially if you have something that's like a six, eight hour stream that you know you're just not going to be able to fit on one SD card. I would kind of caution over the kind of SD cards that you use for this device. You want to make sure that it can keep up with the data rate of whatever you're recording. So if you're trying to record something in ProRes HQ, which is a very high data rate, at like Ultra HD 4K capability, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the latest and greatest, fastest SD card on the market. Uh, we really like the SanDisk Extreme Pros, uh, 95 megabits per second or higher, but the faster you can get it, the less likelihood you are of having drop frames. I mentioned a little bit that it records in ProRes, it also records in Avid's DNA XHD, but one of the biggest differences is that this will not record uncompressed, uh, which the traditional HyperDeck Studio Pros, uh, the 4K Pros and the regular one, uh, the regular HyperDeck Studios can record uh, uncompressed file, whereas these you're limited to ProRes or DNX HD. That's not a problem for us because we're never recording in an uncompressed format. You get these insanely large files. I'm not sure exactly, but you know, like one hour of recordings, something like a half a terabyte, um, just with like HD um, on uncompressed. So you wanna make sure that, I, I could be wrong about that. I don't have a spec sheet in front of me, but just take my word for it. You're, you're really not going to miss the uncompressed recording capability. The uh, menu options here on the front are almost identical, only smaller than the traditional HyperDeck Studio and HyperDeck Studio Pro. Jog wheel is how you get through the settings. In the menu, you have set, play, record, stop, advanced clips. Now, this can also be used as a playback device. Um, you know, it's a little annoying with all HyperDecks to be able to play back from them. Getting the right flavor of codec and whatever that a HyperDeck will recognize to allow you to play it back can be a bit of a strain. So my advice to anyone who's trying to play back something for a show into one of these units or one of the bigger HyperDecks is to actually record, play into the HyperDeck via SDI or HDMI, 
whatever you're trying to play back during the show and record it onto the HyperDeck so that way you'll be sure to know that your file is compatible when you actually do go and hit play during your live show or your live to tape uh, broadcast. On the back we have SDI in. And once again this is a 6G SDI uh, input that supports up to 2160p and 2997, also a straight 30p non-drop frame. And it has PAL formats as well for, for um, all you European users out there or other countries. It has two SDI outputs that are also 6G. You could just use this to split a signal and record at the same time. So there, there's a, you know, a couple of use cases where I could see myself um, you know, needing to split a signal just once. Um, but not wanting to put a DA in line, but I also need to record that signal. So maybe I'll run it into here and split that out to like some confidence monitors. Uh, it's really good for your program feed for you to um, put your final program into this SDI in and then spit it out to confidence monitors or a client monitor that you're gonna want hanging around at Video Village or even on set. It has an HDMI out for to go straight to an HDMI monitor. Um, however, it does not have an HDMI in. The HyperDeck Studio Pros, I believe, do. Um, and I think the, the regular HyperDeck Studio does not. Uh, I'm not too sure about that, but I'm pretty sure that's the way that goes. Um, it has ref in and ref out. Uh, your ref out can be used to daisy chain devices with reference signal. Uh, this is really important for time code and keeping your master clock going and consistent across all your records. So you would bring in um, your reference signal and then you can have a bunch of these stacked up for however many cameras you have in your live show and you can daisy chain the reference signal between all of them. So that's uh, pretty much it for the features of the HyperDeck Studio Mini. Uh, once again, I'm Rob Baynard, producer at LiveX, and this has been another unboxing. Thank you.